oil running down into a beard and onto your clothes? Yuck! Sometimes the poetic images in the Bible really challenge me and Psalm 133 is especially difficult. This is Jackie Anderson for Prescription for Joy and we've been studying the poetic language of Psalms. Come join me today. Psalms 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. We could just stop right there and say, wow, that's wonderful. But then David says, it is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. I think of oil on my clothes and the only thing I can think of is my job as a wife is somehow to get that stain out. But then I have to remember what we're learning. We have to go back to why David was so excited about this simile. Because there's an exclamation mark right at the end of that verse and at the end of the next verse as well. So we need to search a little more because poetic language, well, it's like holding a seashell up to your ear and you hear that sound and all these wonderful memories come back to you. Just that sound, you think about the ocean spreading far, the sand under your feet, the, the shells that you found along the shore, the sound of the waves crashing in. So many memories and poetry is like that. Just an image like this can bring us so many more deep images. So to understand this simile, a simile that compares one thing and another and uses the word like, we have to understand who is Aaron, why was there oil on him, and why is this such a great simile for unity? Aaron was the first high priest, and back in Exodus 28, he was consecrated by pouring oil over his head. And it was a special oil, an essential oil, mix of oils that made it very unique. So Aaron was being uniquely anointed to be God's high priest. And several times in this chapter of Exodus, it emphasizes that he was to be a servant. The smell of this oil would be pleasant and unique. I labeled it the excellent exquisite mix. So what does this have to do with unity among God's people? Well, it seems to be emphasizing the pleasantness of it, the shared pleasantness of it, and the abundance because it runs down his beard and onto possibly even the end of his robe. So we stop and think about, well, unity is rather rare, but when it exists, it is not only pleasant just among the people who are unified, but it becomes a witness to others. Jesus understood how difficult it would be for us Christians to be unified. And so in one of his very last prayers before his crucifixion, he prayed and prayed for unity. On the mission field in Ethiopia, community is very close-knit. We are each other's neighbors, and we are all from very different backgrounds, different cultures, different churches. And so we have to really work at being unified. And I can tell you it has not always been easy. I know that I have had to forgive others. I've had to say unity is more important than me being offended. And when we're unified, we definitely serve together more effectively. A comment by David Gusick, 
The illustration is wonderful. When there is unity among God's people, it is not only good and pleasant in itself, but it also leads to so many other good things. When the people of God struggle with each other, there are so many good things they are not doing and enjoying. The second simile that is used is about a mountain. And it's about the Dew of Hermon, which was a mountain way in the north of Israel. I've been there and it is amazing how much water is flowing down that mountain. It talks about the Dew of Hermon and it was famous because if you set up a tent on the mountain, you would wake up to a very wet tent. I know that I live on a mountain in Sodo, Ethiopia, and our area is so much more lush and green than the lower air areas. But this simile is also hyperbole because it's talking about the dew of Hermon going all the way down to Mount Zion, which is in Jerusalem, far south of Mount Hermon. The dew is never going to reach all the way down there. So what is it saying? It's saying the blessings of life can spread and be abundant. Unity should spread, should be abundant, should be overflowing, should spread the blessings to others. The Psalm starts with the word, behold. That means really look, really see how pleasant unity is and then value it. That's hard at times, but if we all share the value of unity, it can help us to overcome offenses that separate us. The Psalm ends with an interesting blessing saying it is God that will give the blessing life forevermore. So I stopped and thought about how brethren, that's who it's talking about, believers, we are united by the Spirit of God that lives in us. And as we focus on that, on what Christ has done for us, it can overcome so much and bring us better into unity. As we think and value more these similes that David has written about, we can see the emphasis is on the abundance and the pleasantness and the overflowing towards others. So let's pray, let us have unity and let the blessings flow.